to England but staying in the air for our next clip, which features World War II planes and a great escape. A host of classic warplanes have been assembled in Duxford for the Flying Legends Air Show in July 2011, attracting a crowd of around 30,000 who've come to see the finale and delight in the close formation displays. Planes at Flying Legends seem to fly impossibly close to each other sometimes, and this produces a, a most um, a thrilling uh, spectacle that uh, I've not seen in, in, in any other air shows. David Taylor, a plane enthusiast, has been videoing the final runs of the day. And filming one of the VIX as it comes by and decide to follow the lead plane, not knowing that this is actually Big Beautiful Doll and, and Rob Davis's plane. Through the viewfinder, I see another plane come into the shot. Something then seems to fall off one of the planes. Rob Davis is an ex-Royal Air Force Airman who has seen active service. He's been display flying at air shows for the last 20 years and has never been in an accident. Rule one always applies, don't crash. Rob is flying a P-51 Mustang called Big Beautiful Doll, the leader of a three-plane element. And occasionally I'm looking at my two wingmen to make sure they're in position. To complete the brake to land maneuver, split second timing is vital. And it's essential to always keep the plane in front of you in vision. I rise up out of the formation to break, and the briefing was a two second break. So the number two aircraft, two seconds after I break, would rise and break to the left and follow me. The collision between the two rips off a section of the other plane's wing. The pilot regains control and limps back to the airfield. But for Rob, the following 24 seconds were going to be the most testing of his piloting career. The aircraft was hit violently. It rolled to the left, yawed to the right and pitched down and uh, almost twisted my head off my shoulders. In the first two seconds, he tries to stabilize the aircraft. I righted the aircraft automatically using the stick. Then I jettisoned the canopy. And by now, I'm holding the stick fully back into my stomach to try and maintain height. The impact has damaged his pitch control, and he won't be able to stop the plane hitting the ground. It's only four seconds since he was hit. I had no option but to bail out of the aircraft. He's going to have to jump, and he's just 500 feet from the ground. I let go of the stick with my right hand, both hands onto the side, and stood up and pushed into the slipstream. And as I did that, the aircraft pitched over, which helped me get out as well. He hit the plane's tail, fracturing his left elbow and paralyzing the muscles in his right arm. I was very conscious not to put my hand on the D-ring of the parachute until I was well clear of the aeroplane. I didn't want to get towed into the ground by it. He'll have to deploy his parachute within two seconds, but he hasn't used one since his training days in the 1960s. I was in a sitting position, facing backwards, traveling at about 200 miles an hour. With his injured right arm, he pulls his D-ring and releases the chute but he's only 200 feet above the ground. And then I thought, this is really going to hurt now because it's a small emergency chute and I'm quite heavy. The parachute opens just in time and he survives the heavy landing without further injury. And of course, I'd landed only about 30 yards away from the wreckage of the aeroplane. And what I do remember is the absolute silence. And people talk about the sound of silence, and that's just what it was. Incredibly, just 24 seconds after he was hit, he's safe on the ground. Moments later, his phone rings. It was one of my colleagues who was ground crewing for me. And all I got out of him was, Christ, you're alive. <laughs> But amazingly, the pilot who hit him didn't get in touch. 
I haven't spoken to him since the accident. He hasn't spoken to me. So would we exchange Christmas cards? If I had his address, probably I would. At the end of the day, he's a pilot like myself, and accidents happen.